Hi, I'm Ed Cheeseman from Teledyne Marine, and we're here at Deep Campus today where we're going to be surveying the bed of this quarry. We're going to use an uncrewed survey vessel called the Otter from Maritime Robotics, fully equipped with a hydrographic survey suite from Teledyne Marine. The key component here is the sonar itself, of course, a CBAT T51 multi beam from Teledyne Reson, which we'll use to create a high resolution underwater map of this quarry. We'll also use a swift sound velocity profiler from Teledyne Valeport to provide us with through water speed of sound, ensuring the depth measurements recorded are highly accurate. Finally, the coordinates for this map are provided by an inbuilt inertial navigation system. This is aided by GNSS satellite data, ultimately giving centimetric accuracy for that map. In addition to the survey payload, there is a 360 degree camera and LIDAR system for collision avoidance. Everything is operated by a single user from a single laptop. Hi, my name is Sean Wolford. I'm the president of Deep. Deep is an oceanic exploration and technology company. At the core of what we're producing are the next generation of subsea habitats, enabling humans to go and live on the seabed for periods of up to a month at depths up to 200 meters and allowing individuals to maximize their bottom time and continue that work contained within our habitat. Hello, my name's Ian Slade. I'm the Innovation and Product Manager for Teledyne Valeport. The quarry is quite an interesting environment. It's high-sided. It makes some uh, difficulties with things like communications with GNSS. And so we've got kind of various combinations of different systems in order to kind of get around that. Behind me, we have Pim, and he's currently operating the Otter Pro. He's also looking at the positional quality the combined GNSS and an INS system. He's also monitoring the quality of the acoustic data coming from the multi-beam. He'll have a, a number of different views. There's a map view, there is a sonar window. You know, we can do a sound velocity profile or a sound speed profile. And he can control the winch system just from the laptop here. Uh, and then we can, you know, use that data to correct the multi-beam data for the changes in the environment. Hi, I'm Pim Koos. I'm from Teledyne Marine. I'm product manager for the CBAT multi-beams. We're here at this really nice spot, very interesting area for mapping. What we're doing right now is we have our multi-beam on, uh, on the Maritime Robotics Otter. And as you can see, I can communicate with it from here. I can control it from here. But we also have somebody in Norway available to take over and to control it from there. We have a Vilport Swift that we can use to take a cast and collect a sound velocity profile. We use that to correct the uh, multi-beam data. And we have a T51 multi-beam sonar. It works at 800 kilohertz, and we're able to map the whole quarry wall to wall in one pass, which is pretty amazing given you know, the size of it. And we're doing it at 800 kilohertz, so we get the, the finest resolution over such a large area. We're very happy to have you here, Ed. Uh, at our campus um, to allow and make accessible um, something that's been so beneficial to us, help you uh, in delivering kind of these next generation products. Um, so thank you very much for being here. It's very exciting. Thanks, yeah. Sean, for having us. No, it's a real pleasure to be here at yeah. campus today. It's we're using a robot boat from Maritime Robotics to showcase the latest sonar technology from Teledyne as, as partners together in this sector. We're doing some interesting things to drive forward seabed mapping and just make it easier and more accessible. Um, you know, boats that drive themselves that can be operated really from, from anywhere. Today we've been using this vessel piloted by a friend of ours, Harold, uh, from, from Norway, from mm. Trondheim. Um, but tell us more about, about Deep and your vision for campus. What is campus going to be? So this is our center of excellence. This is where the first habitat will get wet. So we're very fortunate here. We have a wonderful profile. We have the shallow end where, where we're at now. And we go down to the deeper end bit there, you can see Subs Island in the back, which again helps us to, to develop further our codes of practice. And down to that bit, it gets about 80 meters in depth. And again, this is where we'll go. We'll go through all of our HCOPs and all of our other procedures and so forth. And where the first aquans, before they go out and use our habitat in the open ocean, they will come here first. Mike, we heard a little bit from Sean about the vision for Deep Campus and some of the testing that you're going to be doing here and the training. But tell me a little bit more, if you would, about the manufacturing process of these subsea habitats. Well, we fabricate the habitats in-house with a technology called wire arc additive manufacturing. This is 3D printing with metal. 
And one of our unique capabilities is that we can print in volumes uh, of, of up to 6.5 meters in diameter. So the habitat is uh, 6.5 meters uh, at, its, at its thickest place. Uh, and we're actually printing that with robots that are fed by a torch uh, a plasma torch with wire and that melts the wire to create the object itself. This actually creates a far, uh, a far stronger uh, end material type than you would get with traditional fabric. Incredible. And, and that's happening here or overseas? It's actually happening just across the river uh, in Avonmouth in England where we have our uh, fabrication workshop set up, deep manufacturing. We're now at the other end of the loch. Um, we have the boat uh, surveying. It's, um, it's being run now by somebody in Norway. They're piloting uh, based on its position, but also using the, uh, the 360 cameras so they can maneuver around some of the, the buoys that we have here on the surface. We're exploring a couple of wrecks here, 30 to 40 meters below the surface, and the level of detail we're getting is really incredible. The outlines and distinctive features, tires, hatches, and even windows, they allow us to easily identify the wrecks this level of precision requires carefully designed receivers with exceptionally low noise levels and really high accurate bottom detection capabilities. This might sound technically really complex, but the system has a number of automated controls that make the operation almost effortless. You'll see how smooth the sonar gates track the changing seabed, and the system automatically changes all the sonar settings so that capturing all these details is really super straightforward and user friendly. We've just done this pass, um, and can you now follow the other edge of the, the wall? And then we've yes. done the whole bit in one go. Yes, I'm uh, heading towards the west uh, side now, okay? Excellent. But it's been a fun day, right, Harold? Really fun. Uh, it's amazing how we can navigate in between these uh, buoys to get the extremity of the, of the lock. Yeah, it's super convenient. So uh, we're almost done. We've done the cast already. Um, thanks for that. And uh, we're just going to follow uh, this side of the wall and uh, then there's job done and we pack up and go home. Yeah. So thanks for your help today, Harold. It was, uh, it was really useful to have you on the line, uh, even though you were in uh, Norway and not here in uh, nice uh, sunny England. It's a very interesting area here. It's a very challenging area in terms of positioning because of the high walls that we have around us. But under the water surface, um, it's also very challenging because of the, the again, the, the steep walls we have and for the acoustics, that's, uh, that's really challenging. We're managing to get nice wide swaths um, and nice, uh, nice crisp data uh, despite all those conditions. So uh, it's looking like a good day. So earlier today we did a sound profile cast using the Teledyne Swift SVP and what we can do is we can connect to the device, the instrument, with the mobile app. So what I did earlier was you just bring up Valport Ocean, you select Bluetooth, you scan for the device and then you can download the files. So here we have one of the files from today, I'll just select it, we can then go to the the chart and we can look at that data. What you can see is at the top layer here, uh, we've got the warmer water, so we've got you know 17 degrees on the surface. And then as we move down, we're actually, we've got what's known as a thermocline. So at about 10 meters, there's quite a difference, quite a change in temperature. And then this, this particular profile, we went down to 53 meters and at 53 meters, we've got eight degrees temperature. So it's a really nice sort of easy display. Then what we can do is we can change the parameters here and we can look at sound velocity. So again, what you can see here is a very similar curve, but this one is depth against sound velocity. Now, one of the key things that affects sound velocity is temperature. Uh, so you'll see that this curve actually follows that similar point, that similar kind of thermocline that we had with the temperature data. The Ocean app is available on both Android and iOS. What's great is that you, you have that Bluetooth connectivity so you can connect to the instrument and it just makes it so easy to be QC your data. You can just have a quick look at it and then you know whether it's good or whether you need to repeat your profile. 
So Sean, what's impressed you today about what you've seen out here on the lake? I mean, you know, what we're looking here, what we're looking to accomplish here with our product development is, is certainly kind of being able to have a good scope and understanding of a lot of the contours. And what we've been very impressed with is just the quality of the data compared to what we've seen elsewhere in the market. Extremely high quality, the automated controls and the remote piloting, again, have driven efficiency and it really has given us very useful data. So this is something that's been very critical in terms of our path and our training. So with the work that Teledyne has accomplished for, for us today, we'll be able to have a really kind of granular, kind of high resolution imagery in terms of where we're going to place our first habitats and the surrounding areas that help inform the kind of the dive teams, making sure those dive programs are in place and then also give us greater confidence of where we're putting that first habitat in our quarry. Well, thanks for that really positive feedback. Yep. And we look forward to helping you some more and partnering here with Deep uh, here at Chepstow. We're very excited. Onwards and downwards, my friend. Onwards and downwards.